Hello everybody, I'm Dan from Wargames Illustrated and I've been joined today by Andy Callan and Steve Wood who uh, have been over at Wargames Illustrated HQ and we've been hosting a game of Black Powder Napoleonic or Epic Black Powder because that's the uh, crunch point, it's an epic game here. So we're using figures of this scale, not the usual 28mm Black Powder stuff but these that are epic scale, more like 13.5mm to be exact. Uh, what we've been doing is, we've been trying this game out for the first time, introducing it to two uh, keen Black Powder players, both Andy and Steve have played Black Powder before at 28mm, but this is the first time they've played it in this scale, so I wanted to introduce them to it and talk about how the game played out. So what we're going to focus on more than anything else is the differences between the two games or how the epic scale looked because look was a big point wasn't it really yeah, i think you were saying so. Andy, it looks very different yeah um with with um what we've got on the table here we've got everything that's in the two starter sets so the red are the british starter set the blue are the french starter set so we've had everything out on the table and we just about fitted it all on didn't we we did yes it was yeah. a bit crowded it was a bit <laughs> crowded it was yeah. a tight fit i mean we just we've just been playing on a six by four table so it's standard for in wargaming terms really yeah. uh, and and what was was the most striking thing was was how sort of cool the um, figures look when they were in attack column or when they were in line they, they look really impressive didn't it? It does yeah and the thing to say is, is actually the actual footprint of a unit in this scale is very similar to the to a, the frontage of a, u a unit of 28 mil yeah but it does have a very different look it feels more like 600 men it's it's actually 80 men, but yeah. it feels more like 600 than 24 do yeah. somehow. And similarly, the big battery over there feels like a grand battery rather than just three guns on their own. Mm. It's uh, no, the vision, the, the, the overall appearance is much more. Probably, probably closer to what the Napoleonic battlefield might have looked like. Yeah, so so once you'd got playing, actually, from a point of view of someone just watching you, I mean, there was no difference in no. many ways to, to you playing a normal black powder game, was it? Nothing there? at all. I mean, the, the rules are, are the same, so it is a standard black powder game. Yeah. Um, but it plays very, very well. And as you can see across the table there, particularly when you've got mass formations, mm. it does look incredibly impressive. Mm. And it does make you feel as though you really are commanding a brigade in as much as we're playing toy soldiers. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't got any delusions of grandeur. <laughs> and of course, this is, this is straight out of the box. They're unpainted figures, but actually, in your mind's eye, once you get used to it, uh, you, you, you can uh, accept, accept that convention. Yeah, I mean it's handy that they do come in different colours, the red for the British, blue for the French, because um, you can just use them like that if you want. I mean it's sacrilege in many ways not to use painted figures, but but I think you were saying Andy, like a dad buys this set of figures for his for his two children and, and you're off and running pretty quickly, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, you can, you can paint the armies as quickly or as slowly as, as your personal circumstances allow, but that you can play with them mm. uh, as, as they are. I think there's echoes of when I started in the hobby and we yeah, had yeah, yeah. airfix soldiers mm. um, and particularly with I mean ACW we had blue union and grey confederate and we, we didn't paint them to start off with but I'd be I'd be more than happy to play with these I think they're great it's very clear who's on what side the only um, difficulty you might have is remembering if you've got specialist units Mm. So it was clear, you know, we, we divided our units up fairly simply. Um, but if, if you want to, uh, you know, uh, differentiate between the different battalions, you'll have to make sure they're flagged properly or have mm. some sort of marker. Yeah. Even, even with the cavalry, I mean, they are, <coughs> the, the, the regiments are clear distinction on the French. I was a French player. So if you look closely, you can see the difference between a dragoon and a, and a cuirassier, for example, mm. or a, a, a carabinier and a, and a, and a line lancer. But Actually, it might be better with, with, with put some labels on. That would be easily done. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we've uh, got La Haye Saint over yeah. there, uh, and we didn't use Hugomon, although that's that's available as well. The trees look pretty good, don't they, as well in, in this scale. Yeah. So um, yeah, it, it doesn't have to be painted. It, you can get use it straight out of the box if you do want to paint it and. There's going to be there's going to be people working out the best way of painting these going on yeah. the table fast, yeah. isn't there? And yeah. I think we're all going to help out with that because if if you like you say if you can do all the faces in one go and all the backpacks in one go, 
he could be up and running with painted figures in no time as well. I think it's going to need a different technique. With 28 millimeter is. figures, yeah, yeah. there is a, tends to be a focus on individual figures and making mm. sure each figure looks nice. And I know some people don't paint that way. Some people are just happy to to churn out a unit. But the tendency in the hobby has been to paint individual figures mm. to a good standard. I think but here yeah. you're looking to produce a unit because you in haven't got individual. Or at least yeah. for the infantry, you haven't got individual. Yeah, of course. Got, you've got, yeah. A strip. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a strip. Uh, so it's very impressionistic. <coughs> Cavalry, the cavalry are individual, yeah. Uh, but yeah. The, the the impression of massed ranks. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't think the pressure is on for you to paint to you know a massive standard, and I think it would be a mistake to try and do that. I mm. think just to give the to make make it clear, you know. So for example, the ninety fifth rifles will be in green as opposed to the line infantry in mm. red. Um, There's all sorts of techniques you can use. You, you could have a convention, for example, that heavy cavalry have black horses and light cavalry have brown, yeah. or something yes. like that, yeah. Yeah. just yeah. to speed things up a bit. Yeah, uh, we, we had a pretty quick game, didn't we? And we were all done in three hours with a lunch with break. With a lunch as well. break, yeah. Two and a half. Uh, luckily, you were provided with sandwiches, weren't you? By oh, the they were marvellous. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we were all done in three hours. We didn't change any of the measurements or distances at all. We didn't no. go for the optional rule. So we used exactly the same measurements that you would at, in, at 28 mil scale, really. And it didn't feel wrong, no, did no. it? And that's, that's using, that's using the, the recommended number of uh, bases to a battalion. Now, yeah. this is four. And as I said, it, the footprint is roughly the same as the 28 millimeter one. Now, people might be tempted to cut that down to three mm. or even two. Um, yeah. But uh, you know that you, 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 the actual rule, black powder rule book is, is very flexible about it. it. Doesn't specify any particular figure, man scale, yeah. or particular scale of figures to use. So it, it, it is in keeping with the the spirit of the of, of the game as it has been from the start, really. Yeah. Uh, so in our game, uh, you were the French, Andy. You yeah. were the British, yeah. uh, Steve, and. You were saying, Andy, that you had one tactic really, and it, and it works. <laughs> the, the one tactic was to, was to put put the uh, put the mockers on the guards' brigade, hoping that would make Steve's lower lip start to tremble a bit. <coughs> there was, uh, yeah, we we followed the the fatal mistake of advancing on the enemy. Yeah. No British <laughs> regiment in no. its right mind would do that. No. We came off the ridge. Yeah. Um, part, I, I think, partly we were driven by the need to find a bit more space because we were hemmed yes, in were the between yes, the, the building right. and the woods. So yeah. I wanted to, a bit more space to deploy, which made me move forwards. Mm. Having said that, that didn't work very well. No, <laughs> put, him in, put him in a bit of an arc of fire, didn't it? Really? Yes, you yeah. Anyway. Your grand battery worked really well. And uh, yeah. and again, that looked really good at this scale, didn't yes. it? Yeah. Yeah. it, it looked, looked that's impressive. nine individual guns. It looks quite impressive. Yeah. Normally, it would just be three, wouldn't it? And yeah. Think, yeah. Well, yeah. You know, but that, that looks... That looks like it can do you some damage, and in fact, that's what it did do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And when you get a brigade of heavy cavalry going into the, the flank of a brigade, it, that really looks like it's going to do you some damage. And, and it, it did. did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, well, so that's about it. We, we the two guys have had a good day out. I yeah, think, I think so. You? Yeah, I, yeah, it's yeah, very good. enjoyable. I can't I can't see why you you wouldn't you know want to do do this. And as I say, if you're not into Napoleonics and it, this is a new venture for you, then for sure this is a great place to start. Mm. Uh, the trap with Napoleonics, of course, is that there are so many different types of uniforms yeah, yeah. that it it becomes impractical and uneconomic for them to produce everything so yeah. you're going to have to do a bit of uh, wizardry with the, with with the, with the paint jobs on these but yeah. it's not it's not beyond at this distance and at this scale, you know. Yeah, really and I think that's the sort of thing we'll be covering in War Games Illustrated as well. Yeah, yeah converting those figures into into different nationalities and, mm -hmm. and whatever. I mean, I know the Prussians are coming next. That's going to be a, another big release for Warlord. But yeah, this is certainly certainly a very good starting point, and you can have a, a good game of Black Powder that that looks a bit different. It's a different tweak on uh, mm -hmm. an already popular set of rules. Yeah. So thanks very much, fellas. Thank you. That was very enjoyable. See ya. <laughs> Bye. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.